Hey guys, it's Ben. Coach of the Baltimore Orioles here with IBL Week 4. Yeah, it's Week 4. We're taking on Goldoa Dragon, coach of the New York Empoleons, I believe is the team name. Uh, his team consists of Jirachi, Terrakion, Mega Altaria, Rotom Heat, Excelgor, Miltank, Primarina, Kafagrigus, Vileplume, and Zatu. And just like last week, <laughs> uh, I feel like I didn't spend a lot of time prepping. <laughs> uh, I think that's my biggest downfall, to be honest, but I don't think I care enough. So, uh, let's just talk about the team. <clears throat> First up, we got the Steelix. Uh, if I remember the calc correctly, I think it's to live two Specs Moonblasts from a Primarina with that much special defense. And, uh, the rest in attack, because uh, Jarable, Earthwick, Stone, just covers for the entire team. I don't have rocks on this set, because I think he could very easily bring Zatu and make it his dedicated switch into Steelix, because it does kind of 1v1 it. I would need some chip on it first, but Stone Edge does like 60-ish on the switch if it's physically defensive. Uh, and Gyro Ball and Earthquake just do a lot of damage for the rest of the team. This is my dedicated Jirachi switch in, because what can Jirachi really do to a Steelix? Uh, it can U-turn out, takes Rocky Helmet damage. Iron Heads and Headbutt takes extra Rocky Helmet damage. I would live before he would flinch me down. Uh, Fire Punch does like 25 max, I think. So Steelix is a very nice Jirachi switch in. I don't think he's going to bring Jirachi just because I have a Steelix. If he wants to bring a specially offensive Jirachi, he doesn't really have anything to hit Steelix for super. Maybe like a Hidden Power Fire or something along those lines. But I don't think he gets Focus Blast, although I didn't check. But I don't think he really gets any special coverage with his Steelix. Next up, we got AV Tentacruel. This thing is very specially defensive. I can take two Spec Psychics from a Primarina uh, so I can like switch in and crap. Tentacruel is my dedicated Primarina switch in, of course, because it's like one of the few decent Primarina switch ins in the game. Uh, I've got Mirror Coat there for, again, Primarina. If I know he's locked into Psychic, I can go hard into Weavile and gain momentum. Uh, um, the AV also helps with like Rotom Heat, Excel Gore. I kind of hard wall Excel Gore, except for like a final Gambit. Uh, Liquid Ooze helps against the Vile Plume, so he can't like Giga Drain me. And yeah, Mirror Coat's just really nice for all the special attackers. Acid Spray is nice for basically all of his mons, but uh, <laughs> this is going to sound really stupid, but I tried to mock myself for this game because I did want to test out some mechanics and also see uh, how I would respond to certain things. I basically tried to give myself a mock for this game. It almost worked. And in that, uh, I had a mill tank chipped down, but it was able to 1v1 tentacruel. But now I have acid spray, so I can lower its special defense, and it can't stall me out. Uh, Scald's nice for burning crap. And rapid spin, of course, for hazard removal. Next up, we got Mew. Bit of an interesting set. Physically defensive with Calm Mind. And you'll notice I got Psychium Z, because apparently Mutium Z is banned! That's so gay! But okay, whatever. It, uh, Immunium Z is not broken, it is balanced, and is banned. <laughs> That's really gay. But okay, we're, we're, we have to run Psychium. <sighs> Sub Calm Mind, Psychic, and Roost. We only really need Psychic. He doesn't have a Dark type. His only Psychic resists are Zatu, which is not a resist, and Jirachi. So if I can ch chip down the Jirachi, we're fine. I considered running Shadow Ball instead of Substitute, and running more offensive variant with like Nasty Plot instead of Calm Mind. But I think this is the best set I can run. Physically defensive allows me to set up in front of Terrakion, assuming he doesn't have something like Toxic. Uh, I can, with the Calm Mind instead of a Nasty Plot, I can take hits from Primarina, and I believe I can 1v1 that if I have a Calm Mind up. And I can keep Calm Minding in front of it. I have enough speed to speed creep a max speed Primarina. Um, same with Tentacruel, I was able to creep a max speed Primarina. What else is this set for? Uh, I mean, I guess I can like sub up in front of other mons. Yeah, this is just a really nice Mew set. I would I really wish I had Munium, but that's... that's a, okay. Uh, next up, I got Infernape. Uh, just like last week, I did consider a couple of different possibilities with the sets here. I did end up going with Life Orb this time around instead of Expert Belt. I was considering, like, Expert Belt U-Turn instead of Mach Punch, with some, just, like, you know, Blaze instead of Iron Fist. But we're gonna go with Mach Punch instead. Mostly because this is a set I had when I passed my team over to my Jenner. Because I kind of forgot to look over the team more. But we're going to roll with it. <laughs> Third Blitz, Close Combat, Gunk Shot. Just one shot basically the entire team. Uh, does it actually? Though? Hold on. Uh, close Combat, one shots Terrakion, I'm sure. Altaria doesn't drop to a Gunk Shot. Right, it doesn't. Uh, Rotom Heat can actually take a hit. I think it takes uh, one Close Combat. Uh, otherwise, everything gets one shot. 
Oh wait, no, he has a Kavagrigus to ignore me. Kavagrigus takes like two Flare Blitzes. <laughs> That's why I was considering U-turn to get momentum on the Kafagrigus. Flare Blitz is still doing really nice damage to it though, and I'm running Adamant. Uh, I'm not gonna run max speed to speed Tyus Tyrakion because I can mock punch that. It doesn't one shot, but it's still doing great damage, and I don't know if he would want to stay in. Plus, I think he's probably gonna bring a Scarf Tyrakion to outspeed stuff like Weavile, uh, friggin' uh, uh, what's it called, Swellow. <clears throat> um, what are, what's this set? Blah, blah. And I'm also not speed creeping Jirachi because if he bring, I don't expect he's bringing it. And if he does, it's got to be Scarf or maybe like Shookaberry, maybe. But well, if he shook it, then wouldn't. I'm not too concerned about Jirachi because I have the Steelix. We're fine. So we're running Admin for an Ape, speed creeping something else, probably the Rotom Heat. Uh, next up, we got Weavile. We were able to run Adamant, which is pretty cool, uh, while still outspeeding the Terrakion. And I have I fake out Ice Shard. This is to counter the Excel Gore lead. I fake out that does probably like half, I think. Don't remember the exact calc. And Ice Shard would finish it off from there, but he would know the Ice Shard would be incoming, so I'd pull a double uh, into. I don't know. He might go into Rotom Heat. He wouldn't go into Rachi. That would be too risky. Uh, he would probably go. Uh, yeah, he'd probably go Rotom Heat, possibly Mill Tank. With that in mind, I would probably go. I could go Tentacruel. Yeah, I think that would be my play. And I don't have Icicle Crash, which could be a bit scary, but it, uh, we should be fine. Low Kick is really nice for Terrakian. Yeah, knockoff is a good move. And lastly, we have Aloma Mola, solely for the purpose of healing up Tentacruel and Steelix. It doesn't really do anything else in this game. I just want it sustained for my two tanks, because I kind of need that. Aloma Mola is like setup fodder for the entire team. <laughs> uh, we've got Knockoff and Toxic there. I'm really scared of a sub Terrakion, but I don't think he's going to ring that. Like I said, I think he's going to ring Scarf. Because, like, sub Terrakion would set up in this thing's face all day. Knockoff's nice for, obviously, knocking off items. Uh, Toxic is nice for chipping down. Let me see what we see. It's kind of early in the morning. And as you guys know, I play very well in the morning. This about early in the morning. It's 10.30, but that's early for me. So Yeah, uh, that's the team. I don't... Wait, what's the defensive doesn't for? I have enough special defense to take. <laughs> I don't remember what that what the calc was for why I have much but uh but we'll pretend I'm smart. Uh, Steelix doesn't have a nickname. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, Steelix doesn't have a nickname, so my Jenner Drake just kind of threw something on there. We'll roll with it because I don't have any better ideas. Uh, and yeah, that's the team. And I'll see you during the replay in a sec. Hopefully we don't get body back. Goldo and I are both off to pretty sloppy starts of the season at one and two. One of us is going to be 2-2, two and two, the other is going to be 1-3, and three, obviously. Yay! i see you in a sec. And with the magic of editing, like, almost two weeks have passed. Uh, it's going to be a late upload. I'm sorry, Brendan. Please don't hate me. So, uh, Gold this is Goldo's team. He does bring the Miltank, Rotom Heat, uh, Altaria, Vixelgore, uh, Zatu, and Primarina. There's no Terrakia, no Jirachi. Uh, so the speed creeping with Infernape is pretty nice. Um... And I don't, and uh, Steelix won't be nearly as important in this game because, uh, again, there's no Jirachi, so um, my dedicated Jirachi switch in can be more of an Altaria check now and like an Excelgore check, unless Excelgore has like Focus Blast or something. Uh, so let's hop right into it. He does lead with the Mill Tank, I lead with the Weavile. Because I lead with Weavile as my dedicated lead uh, to catch the Excelgore if you wanted to lead that, which I kind of expected. I was kind of expecting like a hazard suicide lead. Uh, but he's going to lead with the Mill Tank. So. Uh, I'm leading Weavile, I see the Miltank. Uh, my thought process is, I actually took a while for this uh, turn, because I thought maybe Miltank was like his Weavile check, but um, uh, ultimately I decided to go straight on the offensive, because he can't really kill me with very much. He would have to bring ha he would have to have like an obscure move to one-shot me, so uh, I don't expect him to have the Brick Break. And uh, <laughs> Weavile's going to drop turn one. <laughs> so that's embarrassing. Uh, but I do knock off Miltank lefties, which is nice at the very least. Uh, so now I'm going to send in Mew because uh, Body Slam can't break my sub, if I remember correctly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a sub here. I believe I have a few speed EVs. Uh, yeah, to creep a uh, max speed Primarina. Uh, and Body Slam is not going to break my sub. So this is a free call mine for me. As again, he has no dark type. His resists are like, since he doesn't bring Jirachi, his resist is like um, just Zatu, I think. So I'm going to get up another call mine. Or is that, was that the first one? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Either way, I have a Calm Mind up here at the very least. And it's going to go for another Body Slam, and that is going to 
break my sub. I think that was just one call mind. Uh, also, I guess I should have mentioned this before, but shout out to uh, Drake for joining my team and Joe for recording my game. As he's going to switch out middle tank into the Altaria on the Psychic, because that, right, right, I didn't want him to go hard at Gore, because that thing would be very scary to me if I wanted to go for a sub there, so. Altaria doesn't gain any special defense by Mega Evolving, so I am going to be able to chew a KO this on the Switch, which is pretty really nice. And I should be able to outspeed, uh, unless he's like max speed Jolly or something like that. He would have to be really heavily speed invested. Uh, fortunately, uh, we do outspeed and we do pick up the kill on Altaria and it drops really early. So that's really nice. So Steelix isn't really, um, there's a lot less pressure on Steelix now. So bringing a little Molo wasn't overly necessary for that. Uh, so now I'm going to switch out Mew as I feel it's very vital still for the rest of this game. And I'm going to go into a little Mola as I feel it's just kind of useless. He's going to go for a Bug Buzz. And uh, that's doing some scary damage, but I am able to take another one of those, so... Alright, if, if I remember correctly, here I make a big misplay. I shouldn't go for the knockoff, but I go for a Toxic. Uh, as soon as I clicked it, I was like, wait, no, I shouldn't have done that, because you could very easily go into Zatu and just bop it right back, and that's exactly what happened. So I do make a misplay. It was really stupid. I went for the Toxic instead of the knockoff. Uh, but Alomola is Toxic now, and Zatu is in. So there's no telling what Zatu could have up its sleeve. It might have like dual screens, it might have like Tailwind. Uh, it might go for like a U-turn to get momentum. Uh, it might just go for straight damage, because Alomola isn't a very specially defensive Pokemon, so he would be able to get off good damage with Psychic. As he was going to go for that, he's going to go for a Psychic. And that's going to, again, do some pretty solid damage. Uh, that is revealed to be max special attack modest, if I remember correctly. And I'm going to knock off its Kassib Berry, which is nice. It takes down to half. Uh, so now I'm going to want a GTFO with Lomola. Uh, as, as much as I feel like it's not very useful for this game, it's still like... There's not really a point in uh, sacking it, because I can just go hard into Mew, as I believe that uh, it doesn't wall Zatu, but it should be able to uh, 1v1 it. I'm just afraid of Zatu being faster than me and also having Toxic. He's going to go for a Heat Wave, though, as he does at speed. And... Uh, yeah, that would have broken my sub, so... He's like... I think he was modest max special attack. Probably max speed, too. I think it's, like, base... 90? 95 speed? Something like that? I don't know. I didn't really prep for Zatu at all. But he is going to reveal the Toxic here, as I don't have a sub up. I couldn't have subbed up in front of the Heat Wave anyway, so... Mew is going to get Toxic, which is very unfortunate. And, uh, synchronize Toxic him back, but it's a Zatu, it's not really that scary. I'm gonna get up a Calm Mind, though, uh, so he won't be doing any damage to me aside from the Toxic. Like, if I didn't have the Toxic, Heat Wave, Psychic, that'd be doing nothing to me, so. Um. Uh, what even happens here? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, he might go for a Heat Wave, or he might try to switch out and preserve Zatu. I think he switches out, actually. Yeah, he's gonna switch out. Uh, into the Phoenix. What was that again? Mill Tank. Alright. I'm gonna go for a Psychic, right, and this doesn't kill the Mill Tank, but it comes really close. It does some really nice damage. Me, oh man, me was such a, such a broken mon. It's so good. I love it to death. I'm gonna go for another Psychic just to pick up the kill on the Mill Tank. I just want to get rid of it. I could have gone for another Calm Mind as um, uh, Mill Tank would have been able to. Mill Tank would have dropped the next turn because even if he'd gone for a milk, milk drink, but I think I made the better play by just going for Psychic. I was going to take less poison damage because I have to switch out anyway because the SL Gore comes in. And I'm going to go into a Lomomola, essentially sack it because I feel I don't really need it anymore. Because both my tanks are still at full health uh, and he doesn't have, a, he didn't bring a lot of his threats and the ones he still has like aren't really that scary to me, as I still have Tentacruel, full health for Primarina, still a really easy switch in there, so. Here I'm just gonna go for a knockoff in case he wants to U-turn out and I live, and he does go for the U-turn, and I do hang on, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so I got a free knockoff here, and he's gonna go right back out into Zati, so I already knocked off his item, but either way, this is still super effective, and it's doing pretty good damage. And, uh, it actually picks up the kill on a crit. I think the crit mattered in terms of damage, but it... it it mattered in the sense that um, Knockoff picked up the kill. Otherwise, I think uh, Mew would have gotten the kill because of toxic damage. <clears throat> maybe not that turn, but maybe the next turn. Uh, but Alomola would have dropped, and I would have gotten momentum. But he's going to go into Primarina, and I do predict that, uh, and I'm going to go into Tentacruel. Because uh, we both had free switches. I thought he would want to get a free switch into Primarina, so... 
Uh, not sure if you would want to switch out or stay in. He does reveal to be Scarf Primarina, as I do outspeed max speed Timid. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight for the Acid Spray. I'm not going to go for the Mirror Coat just yet. So, um... Now I think he could very easily switch out again, so I'm going to go for another Acid Spray. Because uh, seeing that damage and seeing that he's taken extra Acid Spray damage, he's not going to want to stay in. As, I, as he does go into the Rotom Heat here on the Acid Spray, and I'm going to chip it down even further. So, what I love about Tentacruel, man, it's so specially defensive... And against something like an electric type, like Rotom Heat, for example, it's going to go for the electric move, and I can sponge that up with the AV, so I can get off a free Mirror Coat and get off a ton of damage. So he does some pretty decent chip there with the Volt Switch, uh, and he's going to go right back out into Primarina. And, uh, Primarina's not going to like this Mirror Coat. That Mirror Coat to the face is going to be doing amazing damage to Primarina, not quite picking up the kill. So he's going to get off another Psychic, but I am able to survive that and pick up another kill with Acid Spray. So Tentacruel is seriously chipped down. Unfortunately, my Acelgor wall isn't uh, healthy anymore, but like, I still have a full health Steelix. I have Infernape. I just have to, uh, and I also have Mew. I have to play around these last two turns really well if I want to pull out the wins. So he's going to go into the Rotom Heat here. He's going to go for a Discharge, and Tentacruel is going to drop. So, now I'm going to go into Mew, as I feel that's my best mod to go into here, since, like, it, it isn't doing anything against Acelgor anyway, so may as well go into it now, as, as opposed to later, when it's not going to do anything later. So I'm going to go for the Roost. Uh, let's see what he wants to go for. If he wants to go for, like, a Volt Switch, I can take a Bug Buzz uh, from Acelgor. He's just going to go for the Discharge, and that's doing some pretty decent damage. That tells me I just have to go straight on the offensive. Uh, so I'm just going to bop my Z-Move here. As it turns out, it's a Speed Tie. Uh, I did actually watch Goldoa's video. Oh, well, I kind of skipped through it a bit. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. But um, I peeped Goldoa's video because, again, this is pretty late. And uh, apparently, yeah, his Rotom was trained to speed tie with a Mew with 20 speed. And Tentacruel also had 20 speed. So both of the... Well, not both of because the first one was just a Mirror Coat. But that last turn with uh, Rotom killing Tentacruel with Discharge, that was a speed tie. I would have gotten off Skull damage otherwise. And that would have killed with... Um, Psych Game Z, because as you can see, Rotom does hang on, and it comes down to a speed tie again, and he wins the speed tie, he's going to get off the Volt Switch, Mew's going to drop, and he's going to get a free switch into a Selgor. I'd have to play these last few turns correctly, and I can pull off the win. I feel like I have all the tools uh, that I need, I just have to not choke. So I'm going to go into Steelix here, as that's like my only thing to go into, as Drake named it, not Joey, not sure if that's like a reference to anything, but I'm going to pause it right here. Hello again, this is Future Ben. Again, so uh, the rest of the recording from this point onward got really choppy and gross. It was a little laggy uh, earlier on in the recording too, but it got really bad after this point. So uh, I'm going to re-record from this point onward. So uh, I thin and steel against the Aselgor. And uh, I have all the tools at my disposal to win this game. It's a matter of not choking. So I see two potential uh, plays here that could happen. So uh, the first play is the most simple. He could just go on the offensive here with the Selgor with like Focus Blast or what other move, whatever, what other ever, whatever other move he might have up his sleeve, uh, and I go for the Gyro Ball, take him down to likely a Sash, uh, and if he doesn't have a Sash, then I one shot him with Gyro Ball and um, send him the Rotom Heat, and I can, I'll die to the Overheat, but uh, Infernape can Revenge Kill, and I'll be able to pull up the one one zero win. But I see one other uh, potential possibility that could happen here. He could switch out to Selgor into Rotom Heat on the Gyro Ball. <clears throat> Rotom does live one Gyro Ball, so um, he would get the momentum there, he would be able to go for an Overheat, or if he really was ballsy, he could go for a Volt Switch on my Switch into Infernape, which might be his, like, his only way to win, because if you Volt Switch on my Switch into Infernape, he would be able to send a Selgor back in. If he has Water Shuriken, he could go for that. He doesn't even have to risk that, he could go for a better move if he has it, because uh, he's Sash, likely. But um, he might be able to 1v1 Ape, and then uh, he would just sack Selgor to Steelix, and then Rotom comes in and kills Steelix. So it could get tricky if he pulls a switch into Rotom Heat here. So I consider clicking Stone Edge, because 80% of the time, it's just as good, and it does cut over the switch. But Goldoa is not Gypsy King. He's not Techno. No disrespect, of course, but I don't know if he would make that play. I think he would just attack the mod in front of him. So I'm going to play it safely and just stay in and go for the Gyro Ball. As he does go for the Water Share again. And that does nothing. So, Steelix gobbles that up. Three hits, fortunately, so not a ton. 
and Gyro Ball is going to come off. I'm going to absolutely bop this thing because Excel is ridiculously fast, and to bring it down to its Sash. So it is indeed Focus Sash. I should be able to take another hit, no problemo, unless he has got like five Water Shuriken hits and maybe like a crit or two. But uh, fortunately for me, he'll get three hits once again. And Gyro Ball is going to come out. It makes such a Gyro Ball on that Stone Edge because if he didn't go into Rotom before, I would go into it now. So Excel is going to drop. And I do have Infernape in the back, so I can just sack Steelix to the overheat, and I can send it Infernape, and I don't know Rotom speed. It's exactly speed tying with a 20 speed Mew, so he's going to go for the Inferno Overdrive. 100% accuracy, he doesn't get the special attack drop. Uh, so, yeah, Steelix is going to drop here to the Inferno Overdrive from Rotom Heat, and uh, like I said, I know Rotom's exact speed. Uh, I have Infernape, Infernape is faster, I know this for a fact. So, I am able to pull out the win here, so. Steelix drops. Out comes Infernape. And, uh, this game was pretty close. Uh, especially with Weavile dropping turn one, I'm happy I was able to, like, turn it around. Uh, Mew was a huge factor in winning this game. Mew put in so much work. Uh, Lomol getting the crit on Zatu was nice. Tentacruel was also a huge factor in this game. Walling, Primarina, getting off big damage with the Mirror Coat. So, really happy with how I played. Minus the Toxicing with Alumamola in front of Zatu. That was really embarrassing. We're not going to talk about that any further. So, uh, good game to Gildoa. I uh, felt like we both played that game pretty well. So, I guess that's all there is to say. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week when we take on Joe, Joe's PH Games. He's been uh, recording my games lately, so that's been cool. He's a cool dude. Uh, look forward to playing him. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week. This is a late upload. I'm sorry. Don't hate me, Brendan.